All right, hello. Today I wanted to make a quick video on something that I have owned for the past couple of months now. It is indeed the Mazamini grinder, but with a little twist. So for a little context, I had originally purchased the Mazda Mini not having done a whole lot of research. I mean, I had a Breville Barista Express and I usually single dosed my shots out of it. But the Mazda Mini that I had purchased was of course the Dosa model, um, the one with the big chunky old container with the thwacky side handle. Obviously it was not ideal for the purposes that I had and so I stumbled across this website called homedoseless.com. Um, it looks like it was based out of Taiwan and it was probably manufactured by a one-man team from the looks of it. So um, it piqued my interest because it looked promising from the purposes that I had and I purchased it. To this day, I still own it, but there are a couple of odd quirks that I would like to talk to you guys about today in this video. To start off with, the mod is pretty simple. It comprises of a hopper cap, of which there are two variants, um, and you can opt out of the hopper cap if you like. I got the cheaper aluminium one. It has a small opening at the top, which I thought originally would be useful to blow air into the device so that any of the coffee beans in the hopper area would be pushed into the grinder burrs. But then I never really ended up using it because it, tend, it tended to make a mess and, um, all the grinds would escape out the side, so I decided not to. The second bit you'll get is a dosalus chute. It also has a hole for blowing air into. Now, this one is useful because it tends to push the grinds that sit inside the chute and the Mars Mini down into the porter filter. It also attaches magnetically to the third bit of the kit, which is the stainless steel back plate. Now, a couple of things to note here. The magnetic utility is there so you can tap any remaining grinds from the chute back into the portal filter. Um, I however found that the old grinds would tend to accumulate there and be replaced by newer grinds over time. So I would be able to get a relatively stable dose without using the magnetic mechanism because of course that would make a lot more mess and I didn't want that. Now, the second thing is that the back plate cleverly screws into the existing drill holes um, it made the whole process of installa installation a cinch. Now the final piece of the puzzle is that the portal filter holder uh, itself has quite a wide mouth and so it's useful because it means that I was able to manipulate the portal filter around to distribute the grounds more easily. Um, it also screws into the pre-existing drill holes of the Mars Mini so the installation again was very easy. The con of it is that because of that wide opening, it's not really safe to just leave your portal filter there. The vibrations of the Mars motor will ensure that it will eventually fall out. And so I would not recommend it for portal filter holding. Now in terms of how consistently the mod achieves single dosing, I did some measurements over the last couple of days, found that I was almost always getting within 0.1 to 0.3 grams of the initial coffee weight after grinding. So it's pretty good and it definitely saved me time from having to brush the grinds out of the dosing container on my old original pre-modded out Mars Mini. Now I think realistically, you may be able to achieve even more consistent dosing with less retention if you did the full shabam and use the hopper cap hole, push the air through, use the magnetic function to really push all the residual coffee through the whole system. Now for me, that's not really worth the time or the effort or the mess. So if I were to do this all over again though, I'm pretty sure I would opt for a different grinder like the Baratza Sete 270 or even the Niche Zero if I had the money. Just because I think the whole process of single dose grinding in those machines, it's even quicker and it's more consistent. But if you happen to have a Mars Mini lying around or you got one, a secondhand one for really cheap. Uh, this might be worth considering. Uh, it retails for 90 US dollars for just the basic setup, which includes the chute, the porter filter holder, and the stainless steel back plate. That's probably all that you really need unless you don't have one of these air blowy things, which costs an additional 10 US dollars. Um, the hopper cap itself, that's an extra 25 US dollars for the aluminum version. And I think 45 for the stainless steel Anyway, that's up to you. 
The website looks like it does the same exact mod for the Mazda Major and the Mazda Super Jolly. So if you own one of those machines as well, then this may be something worth also looking into. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.